Hello, everyone, and welcome to our module on cleft lip and palate. Cleft lip and palate are congenital malformations of the face and the roof of the mouth, and cleft lip, which is shown in this child on the screen here, is the most common cranial facial malformation, and it often occurs together with a cleft palate, which is a gap in the roof of the mouth. The exact cause of these disorders is not known, but it is believed that they have a multifactorial etiology that depends on environmental and genetic factors, and these usually don't run in families in an autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive fashion. Let's start by talking about cleft lip. Cleft lip is a problem of the primary palate. This is the front of the palate, and therefore it involves the front of the roof of the mouth and the upper lip, as you saw in that child on the last screen. This portion of the palate is formed by fusion of a number of structures. Let's look at my drawing at the bottom of the screen here. So in the embryo, there are these two structures in the middle of what will eventually become the face and the palate that are called nasal prominences. And they fuse to form the philtrum, which is the little bump right above your upper lip. On the outside of the embryo, in the future location of the face and the mouth, there are structures called the maxillary prominences. These derive from the first pharyngeal arch, and I mentioned them in the video on the pharyngeal arches. These will fuse with the green nasal prominences shown in my drawing at the bottom to form the primary palate, which is the front of the mouth. And failure of this process is what leads to a cleft lip. In this drawing on the left side of the screen, you'll notice this bump above the upper lip and below the nose. That is the philtrum. You may know that babies born with the fetal alcohol syndrome have a smooth philtrum. This bump is often minimal or not present, and their upper lip is very smooth. That philtrum is formed by fusion of the nasal prominences, and they must fuse normally in order to avoid development of a cleft lip. If you look on the right side of the screen, this shows everything that derives from the maxillary processes. They develop laterally and grow inward, and they fuse with those nasal prominences. So if they don't fuse normally, that can also lead to a cleft lip. There are many forms of a cleft lip. It can be unilateral and incomplete, or unilateral and complete, or it can even be bilateral and complete and these conditions are usually treated with surgery. A cleft palate, which often goes together with a cleft lip, is a problem of the secondary palate. This is the back of the palate, the back of the roof of the mouth. There are two lateral structures in the embryo called the palatal shelves. They're sometimes called the palatal processes, and these must fuse to form the secondary palate, which is the back of the roof of the mouth. And if they do not form normally, this will lead to a cleft palate, as shown in these pictures at the bottom of the screen. And just like there are various forms of cleft lip, there are a number of forms of cleft palate. A cleft palate can be incomplete, as shown in this picture on the left. It may also occur together with unilateral or bilateral cleft lip deformities. And that concludes our module on cleft lip and palate.